Hey guys, welcome back squad members. One of the things I want to talk about is malfunctions with this thing. So if you own one of these, a couple things you should know. How to perform immediate action and what is the sequence of fire, eight step cycle of operation. If you don't own one, eh, hang around because I'm going to make it interesting anyway. Now, what is the most, tip, what most common uh, malfunction with this platform, so AR-15, this one being a, a BCM 14, 14 and a half inch key mod, and I've got uh, aim point three by multiplier and aim point T2, I love this setup. So what's the most common malfunction with this? I'll let you think about it before you answer. The answer is shooter induced, self-induced uh, malfunction. So you either didn't seat the mag, you didn't lo load it right, it's not in battery, etc. Shooter induced, no doubt, is number one. So how do we perform immediate action with this guy? I got some dummy rounds right here. Dummy rounds. How do we perform immediate action with it? <clears throat> slap and rack, right? Now slap and rack is not going to cure every malfunction, but it's going to cure most all shooter induced malfunctions. And since most or the most common malfunction with this platform is shooter induced, it's going to clear most of those. So slap and rack, slap and all right, we got to pay attention where we sent those dummy rounds because those are more expensive than real rounds. Uh, slap and rack. So what I want to go over is malfunctions with this, and I want to do it in the eight steps of cycle of operation or sequence of fire. So I like to start the sequence of fire with firing. So fire, failure to failure to fire. What causes failure to fire? A couple things. No, it's not that it's not loaded because that's shooter induced. <clears throat> failure to fire is. You did everything right, but there's a, a, a mechanical malfunction somewhere with the uh, machinery. Um, failure to fire, one is cheap ammo, so bad primer. Uh, another could be that, um, I've seen this a couple times, broken hammer spring. So the hammer spring's broken on one side or the other. Failure to fire, how do we clear that? Slap and rack, slap and rack. Dummy around. All right. <clears throat> After firing comes unlocking, unlocking, boom, right there. Now, there's not a lot of malfunctions here with unlocking, but with the third one, there's a bunch of them. So, firing, unlocking, what's next? Extracting, right. So, extracting, failure to extract. Mm. So, the good news with this one, if I'm pulling here, is that it's not your extractor because that thing's hanging out for dear life. So, failure to extract, it could be a couple things. Number one, again, cheap ammo, so that has expanded in the throat. So, it's, it's the uh, casing is expanded in the throat. Could be a foul throat. It could be that there's an obstruction in the throat. <clears throat> so, those are the main causes of a uh, failure to extract. How do we clear this? Yeah, we've got to mortar it. Now, uh, before we mortar it, always collapse your stock. And I like to take one for the home team and go right on my thigh. So we grab our charging handle and eject that guy, and then we could extend this stock and put it back into action. I don't even take my mag out for that one. Another type of failure to extract is broken extractor. So it's important that, excuse me, let me get a dummy round, that when, when we take our uh, bolt out of our bolt carrier that we inspect our extractor. Let me see, I've got an extra one here. We want to make sure that that guy's nice and sharp. You know, that he's nice and sharp all the way across. So we need to ex ex inspect our extractor. I like to get a dummy round or a piece of brass too. When I put my bolt back together, I'll hook it under the extractor and give that guy a tug. Make sure he's hanging on nice. All right, so firing, unlocking, extracting. Next, ejecting. So ejecting, there's a couple different ways to eject. One looks like this right here. <clears throat> where the brass just trickles out and it doesn't go anywhere. So I know what you're thinking, but it's probably not that. More commonly, what I've seen is ejector spring tension. So when you put your bolt back together and you hook your dummy round or your brass under there, you wanna feel what your ejector spring tension feels like. Because if you know what right feels like, boing, you know what wrong feels like. And wrong will slap you in the face, excuse me. So ejector spring tension is typically what causes that guy right there. Let's get rid of him. Firing, unlocking, extracting, ejecting. Now another type of failure to eject is this right here where, the, where you fire, boom, 
and it rechambers that piece of brass. That is a failure to eject, but it's because of the next one. Firing, unlocking, extracting, ejecting, cocking. So it's failure to cock. So it didn't cock because we're probably losing gas. And we lose gas from a few different places. Gas block, gas ring, or I mean, uh, gas key, I'm sorry. So I've seen it a couple times where the gas key was loose. And the last one is gas rings, right? So the gas rings. Got to have three of those guys there. No, it doesn't matter if the gaps are aligned or not aligned. Doesn't freaking matter at all. A way to check your gas rings is when you put your bolt back into your bolt carrier, you should be able to suspend your bolt carrier with your bolt. So this is right. And let me get another one. Three gas rings present. This is wrong. So these gas rings are not hanging on. So those gas rings need to be replaced. It's a good idea to have gas rings with you in your gun bag. They're easy to, they're super cheap and easy to uh, replace. And they should be replaced periodically. So, firing, unlocking, extracting, ejecting, cocking. Next is chambering, right? So, I mean, yeah, uh, feeding, I'm sorry. So there's a couple different types of failure to feed. A common one is that guy right there, which is a double feed. So during a double feed, what happens is a round jumps out and sits on top of the magazine. Bolt come, during cocking, a round comes out and sits on top of the magazine. As the bolt comes forward, it tries to chamber two of them. So the best way to clear that is just strip the mag out, lock it to the rear, get your fingers up there and clear it out. All right, let's drive on. Whoops. Just like that. Get those guys out of there. All right, another type of failure to feed looks like this right here. Oh, <laughs> oh my mother of God. What did I create there? It's a bolt override. So what happens, I call this a double feed gone rogue. So with bolt override, what happens is during cocking, a round jumps out and sits on top of the magazine. As the bolt comes forward, this round goes like that and it tries to chamber one. And this round gets caught between the bolt group and the charging handle. Now that guy is in there, you can see. Golly. I mean that thing is in there tight now the easiest way to clear this notice I pulled that charging handle back about an inch pay attention because this is magic I'm gonna hold that bolt group in place anywhere doesn't matter just hold it in place and I'm gonna send this forward boom so firing unlocking extracting ejecting feeding What's next? Chambering. Fade a chamber. Now, I've been on the range a lot. I've seen a lot of stuff. Five times with my own eyes. I've seen either an earplug or a cigarette butt chambered. That's right. Um, I've also seen, I had this one shooter who kept uh, having failure to extract. And when I took her gun apart, uh, I pulled out with a dental tool a Jolly Rancher wrapper fused to the inside of the throat. <clears throat> yes, I've seen some stuff. All right, so chambering, failure to chamber. Uh, could be obstruction in the throat. Uh, could be very, very foul throat. Uh, I've also seen uh, cosmetic imperfections where all the rounds were bent. <laughs> yep, I've seen some stuff. And then after chambering comes locking. And then after locking, back to firing. So firing, unlocking, extracting, ejecting, cocking, feeding, chambering, locking. So steps, uh, eight steps cycle of operation or sequence of fire and how to clear some of those most, the most common malfunctions. Thanks guys, rock and roll.